Um, welcome everyone. This is a workshop about writing, how to write a personal statement. Um, my name is Ethan Bull. I'm a health professions advisor in the A Center. And so um, I'm glad you were able to come today. Um, and so what we're gonna do to start is I'm gonna share my screen with you and we're kind of, gonna kind of walk through a presentation. Are you able to see that on your screen, everyone? Perfect, thank you. Okay, so this is the end of the presentation. Somehow it got over there all the way to the end. So I'm gonna skip back to the beginning. Sorry about that. Now you got a quick preview. Um, there are uh, some handouts that I'm gonna be using in the presentation. Uh, and so you'll see that the link on this page here, it's a bit.ly forward slash Ethan handouts. And so there's a bunch of handouts that, that may be useful for you to have as part of the presentation, but also for you to use later on. So that's that link. I'm hoping we can add that to the chat. Um, just an introduction to our office. Uh, my name is Ethan Bull. I'm the person talking. I am in blue on this on this slide. Um, Josie Jin Morgan uh, is the director of our office. Uh, Renee Lozano, also a pre-health ad advisor. And then Lauren Mosley, who's with us today. Uh, she's our very newest pre-health advisor. Um, just so I can get a sense of who's here with us today, do you mind putting your the profession that you're thinking about going into and what year you are in school uh, into the chat? And then we'll get a sense of kind of, you know, who's in here, what professions you're thinking about. Let them see med school, PA school, PA medicine, juniors, seniors, sophomores. Lots of medicine, uh, public health. DO school, great. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of pre-meds and PA and, and, and public health going on and folks getting ready to apply soon or um, a few years away. So um, awesome, thank you for sharing that information. Okay, so uh, our goal for today, you know, essentially the goal for today is to tell you about how to write a personal statement. There's no one magic way to do it. So I'm gonna be giving you my vision um, some things that I think that, that might be helpful, um, uh, but uh, but obviously you'll need to incorporate things that work best for you. You know, overall, right? An overview of how to write a personal, uh, an effective personal statement, including what the goals of a personal statement should be, what you might want to include, and what you might want to avoid um, in in your personal statements. Um, I do want to give you some practical tools, so some possible methods for getting started with a personal statement. And then um, hopefully you feel ready uh, by the end of the, at the end of the, the workshop to, to write a first draft. So the task at hand depends on the profession you're going into. Most of you said medical school, so you're looking at 5,300 characters, both DO um, and MD have gone to the same number of characters now, so it's less confusing. Um, uh, PA school is, at um, 5,000, which is an odd and unique set of characters for itself. Um, but it, it's kind of around the same, same length. Um, there's some good and some bad news about writing a personal statement. So the bad news, uh, we'll start with that. Um, most students, including people who are English majors or history majors or philosophy majors, um, find that the essay, or the personal statement is the biggest challenge in the application process. Um, it's not really something that they teach you in college. They don't really teach you how to write a personal essay, how to write a personal essay um, about you and how awesome you are without seeming like you're bragging, right? So it's a skill that you're not really taught. It's not something that's really taught in college. And it's something that can feel a little bit awkward in some ways. Um, the good news though, is that you've got all the content already. Um, there's nothing, you don't need to do research. You don't need to find peer reviewed articles. You, the content of this is gonna be your clinical experience, your volunteering experience, your experience, and just your life in general, right? So the content is, you've already got it. 
more good news is that it's less about what you say and more about how you say it, so it's how you tell your story, not exactly you know, how many hours of shadowing you did um, or you know, did, you, uh, uh, did you do a semester abroad in Spain and, and, and observe uh, doctors there? It's more about how you tell your story. Um, than what exactly you did. And, and schools are really looking at what you learned from your experiences, how you grew and why you did them, not exactly what it was uh, when they're looking at your personal statement. Um, the bottom line is that this is the one place that you could show who you are beyond your grades, your test scores, your list of activities and the classes that you've taken. Um, and so if you're thinking about, you know, a lot of students are pretty similar in terms of GPA, pretty similar in terms of the great classes they've taken, pretty similar MCAT scores. So the thing that uh, medical schools will often use to help them determine between students that look pretty similar on paper um, is this essay, is the personal statement um, and, and determining whether they want to give you an interview or not. So it really, it really is worth focusing on and doing the best you can with. Um, more good news is that we know what health profession schools are looking for. Um, the AAMC core competencies, even though this, this is for MD school, um, they can carry over to any health profession. They're a great place to start if you are applying to PA school, if you're applying uh, to, to a different uh, professional, professional school. These are a great place to start. Um, and, so those are, you know, they're looking at the pre-professional competencies and they're looking at you to demonstrate those in your personal statement and your activity sections um, of, of your applications. And so, you know, cause you're gonna be the other competencies on, the, on this list. Um, they're gonna be looking at your MCAT scores and your classes and your transcripts and that kind of stuff. Um, but these are the core ones that are gonna, they're gonna be looking for in your personal statement. So integrity and ethics, reliability and dependability, service orientation social and interpersonal skills, teamwork, capacity for improvement, including reflective thinking, which you can demonstrate in a personal statement, uh, resilience and adaptability, cultural competence, thinking about the many dimensions um, of diversity um, and competence and, and oral communication, communication more generally. So you've got this, you could totally do it. A puppy is winking at you and pointing at you, you know you've got it. Um, so what to say? So as, as an example, I've got the AAMC prompt up here and it says, use the space provided to explain why you wanna to go to medical school. So they don't give you much detail, right? Um, basically what they're asking, I think there's a lot, a lot of different ways of thinking about what they're asking. So I'll frame it in several different ways, but I think about it in, in this way to start. Um, basically they're asking, how do you know you're right for this, possession, uh, this profession? So why do you wanna do this? Um, and number two, how do you know this profession is right for you? So how are you sure that you'd be good at it? So those are kind of the two core questions, right? What's the spark? What's the thing that led you to medicine that makes you want to do it? And also what experiences have you had that have shown you that you'd actually be good at it? Um, and so there's a variety of other questions that you may think about um, in, in terms of what they're asking. In some ways, they're kind of asking, who are you? Because they do want to get to know you. They're also asking, you know, how did you get where you are? What set you on this path? What kept you coming back despite the challenges? Um, they're also kind of asking, what are your ideals and values and how do they fit with this profession? Or, you know, even in short, why will you be a great doctor? Why will you be a great physician's assistant? In terms of how to say it, uh, general principle of creative writing, uh, particularly in fiction, is show, don't tell, right? So you want to show your reader, um, you want to show the admissions committee um, why you feel ready for professional school. Um, and uh, so, you know, in terms of an example of show, don't tell, um, so an example of telling would be, you know, through my work at the local homeless shelter, I came to understand the daily struggles that many face, and it allowed me to really empathize with others. So that's telling people what you learned in this particular clinical experience, but you can also show them. And this is often a way that they get, that a school gets to know you and it makes your story unique. Um, and so here's an example, Bob, 
one of the residents I met on my first night at the outside in shelter haltingly pulled a chair up next to me and sat down panting. I was crushed to see he had a bandage on his leg that was slowly getting redder. And then, you know, you continue on with the story and then you will end up doing some telling, right? You're gonna wanna connect the dots for your reader, but you do wanna show them, right? And you can, in a scene like this, you can show them so many things about you, right? You were sitting, uh, the, the person sat next to you so they felt comfortable with you, right? They were bleeding, right? So there's all sorts of things that, you know, it would take you a really long time to explain all those things, but a story can kind of get a lot of that across. Um, a lot of things across that you don't really have room to get across and you can show it to your reader. Uh, other things to do, uh, strive for depth as opposed to breadth. Um, so you do wanna narrow your focus to one to two key themes that are gonna run throughout your essay. Um, and probably you'll focus on one to three key experience or experiences or activities. You're not gonna have time to really get into more than that um, because you, you do wanna make sure you're telling a story, you're bringing your reader in, you're showing them things and you're connecting the dots for them. And so you just don't have that much space to do more than that, um, to really do it justice. Um, you definitely want to be yourself, uh, not the candidate that you think the admissions committee is looking for. Um, you know, if you can keep that in your mind, um, that's your way of saying something unique that no other applicant is gonna say. Um, or at least you'll be saying it in a, in a way that's different than them. So if you can be yourself, if you can show your voice and show a little bit of your personality and who you are, um, as opposed to what you think they wanna hear, right? They wanna hear, you know, you just wanna help people and, um, you know, you care for everyone and those kinds of things. You wanna tell them, you know, what, who you are, what, what your real experiences are like. Um, and that's how you, you, can, you can stand out in the personal statement, right? It's just by showing them who you are. Um, you do wanna also focus on the positive. Uh, so there is, it's easy to get caught, caught up in explaining away your mistakes or your faults. Um, usually you just wanna stray away from that at all. Sometimes that brings up red flags. And so usually it's easiest to, to not address those. You may be in a position where you feel like, you know what, this is something I wanna address. Um, you know, it might be something in your academic transcript. It may be, you know, something else that came up. If that's the case, you still want to focus on the positive. So if you are talking about a fault or a weakness, you want to focus on how you grew, um, how it led to a strength, um, those, those other portions. But mostly your personal statements can just be focusing on, on the positive, focusing on those strengths that you bring to the table. Um, you also want to show the admissions committee that you know the profession. So, um, you know, that means that you know exactly what it means to be a doctor. You know, the gritty, you know, late at night, long hours, vomit on your shoes part of being a physician, and you still want to do it, right? And so the stories that you're going to be telling and the experiences um, are also going to want to want to demonstrate that, right? You really know what it means, um, and you still want to do it, and why, of course things you don't want to do. We'll start with the Madonna principle. Um, Papa don't preach. Um, maybe this was funnier when I wrote it a year ago. Um, but basically, you don't want to preach to your reader um, about what a good healthcare professional should be. I know, you know, I see it a lot. Um, and I understand the, the, the idea. But, you know, think about your audience, right? Put yourself in their shoes. Imagine that you're on an admissions committee, um, you're a professor um, at a medical college, you've been a physician for 22 years, and um, you have a pre-med pre student um, telling you what a good doctor should be, right? So you don't wanna be telling the admissions committee what a good doctor should be, right? Instead, you should talk about times where you've observed a great practitioner in action, right? Maybe someone that you've shadowed or that you are working with in a clinical setting. Um, maybe talk about, you know, them as an example of the type of practitioner you want to be or how you responded when, when a practitioner uh, did something that, you, that really matched up with your value. Um, so, so make sure you're not preaching to your reader. Um, you also want to avoid um, the pitfall of saying you were chosen for this career or that it's your calling. Um, I don't know how many times I've read that in personal statements. Um, Right? The, the idea is that you're putting the, the decision, the motivation, 
for doing this outside of yourself. So you didn't choose this, it chose you. You're just doing what destiny um, has, has set up for you. So you wanna make sure that you're saying, I am intentionally choosing this. I intentionally choose this, chose this because I wanna do it. And I have all these experiences that show I'd be great at this. And so I am intentionally choosing this career with all the good parts and the bad parts. Um, there are three ways that we see this most commonly. Um, the first is you're called by your religious beliefs to get into this profession. And you know it's very reasonable, right? Maybe your religious beliefs are part of the reason why you're going into medicine. Okay, but it has to still be your choice because there's all sorts of ways that you can use your religious beliefs to, to, to help people in the world. And this is one particular way of doing so. Uh, so make sure that you're avoiding that one. Um, another common one we see is a number of family members um, are in this profession and therefore it's right for me, right? My dad was a doctor, my grandfather was a doctor, therefore I'm going to make a great doctor, right? We want to see you choosing this, not just because it's in your family tradition. And we want to see, you want to explain why um, you'd be great at it um, based on your traits, not based on your family traits. You want to make it about you. Um, or, you know, the other common one is you're expected to do this because of your family's needs or desires, right? So no one in my family has ever gone to college. My family has just always wanted me to go to medical school and I have to do this, right? Again, that, that could be part of the story that you're telling, right? But it's, you still have to make sure you're getting across that it's something that you're deliberately choosing based on your experiences. Um, you also want to make sure you're not simply recounting your entire work slash activity section of your medical school application in a uh, narrative form. Um, you have that whole section of, of your, your health professional application. And so they're gonna read that too. You wanna do something different, right? You wanna show them something about you that they can't see um, from that section. And so there, there is gonna be a little bit of crossover, right? It may be, you know, one of the, you're gonna be describing an experience in the activity section and you're, you're talking about a moment that happened when you were volunteering in your personal statement, right? So there's gonna be some crossover there, but you do wanna do as much as you can to add something that they can't learn from that section. So you're showing them the fullest picture of yourself possible and using all those opportunities to show them who you are. Um, you do wanna to try to avoid a common theme if you can, um, or at least be aware that it is a common theme. Um, you know, for example, just know that I have always wanted to be a insert health profession here is really common, right? So, you know, since the time I was a child, I was playing with, um, you know, medically related toys and, you know, as a teenager, you know, all those kinds of things. So that's a really common theme. Um, and so, the danger is if it feels common to someone, they stop reading, they stop paying attention, right? If it feels like a cliche, if it feels like something that they've read before, um, they're no longer um, they're no longer paying attention. They're just kind of, you know, going through the motion. Um, another one, as a patient, I had a great healthcare experience. So, you know, I broke my leg, I went into the hospital and the doctors treated me beautifully. And that's why I wanted to be a doctor. That's also super common. Um, and then another really super common one is um, someone close to me had a disease. I spent a bunch of time with, with the healthcare system as a result, and that's why I want to be a doctor. Um, the truth is you have to do what's true for you, right? So you got to tell your story. And I think most personal statements are touching on something related to one of these three. Um, and so don't feel like, oh, I can't write about that, right? You know, if it's true for you, you're going to have to write, right? If, if the reason why you want to be a doctor is because you cared for your grandmother um, who had cancer for two years, right? You can't not talk about it. Um, but it's just important that you're aware um, and that you know, right? So then the way you're telling your story, you have to be really careful to know that people are reading a lot of statements that are saying similar things. So how can your statement be, uh, be unique to you and tell your story, not a story that people have heard a million times? Um, you also want to make sure not to focus too much on events from your childhood. Um, instead of talking about more recent events that have shaped your desire to go into a health profession. So while medical schools are, you know, they're, they're super interested, right? They want to know your story. They want to know who you are. And so it may be appropriate to talk about a child experience that sparked your interest in medicine. Um, but they also want to know that you've done something since then. Um, and that you've confirmed that spark, you've done more things that have led to that interest. So even though you might mention something 
Um, make sure your whole statement isn't about stuff that happened when you were a teenager or in high school or when you were a child. You do want some very recent experiences in there um, to, to, to demonstrate that um, you still have an interest. It's not just something that, that was happening in the past. You also want to avoid boring, cliched intros, phrases, or conclusions if you possibly can. Um, and again, re remember what I said, right? As soon as we see something that seems so familiar, it seems like a cliche or it seems like a, a well-worn phrase, most readers just kind of tune out and they stop paying attention. They fill in the dots, right? Some story I've heard before. I know how it goes. I don't need to read it carefully. So when you say things like, allow me to introduce myself, my name is blank, this question asked to discuss, I'd like to thank the admissions committee for considering my application, it's my sincere hope that you'll grant opportunity to attend your fine school, or in sum, there are three reasons why you should admit me. Those kinds of phrases aren't a great use of your 50 characters or your 5,000 characters. Um, there's not a lot of space. Um, and these kind of phrases just kind of disappear into the background. And so any way you can get rid of that, um, stuff. Um, you'll be writing a better personal statement that, that engages your reader even further. Um, I also find that some students get stuck on how to write a personal statement on the don't do this or do do that kind of advice, and they just don't know where to start, right? So students will set up an appointment and they'll be like, Ethan, I'm stuck. I know I can't write about this and I can't write about that. And, you know, you said not to do a calling thing, and I know I have to have three different experiences. And so they kind of get stuck and paralyzed, right? Writer's block, whatever you want to call it. And so don't, don't get yourself in that position, right? That you're so carefully trying to craft this thing that you're not able to show who you are um, to write with your voice and that kind of stuff. Um, definitely avoid passive voice, present past progressive, or peasant present or past perfect progressive or other types of convoluted phrasing. Um, in general, uh, be as straightforward as possible. Use active, use active verbs. Simple writing is good writing. Um, if you were ever the kind of writer that spent a lot of time using the, thesaur the thesaurus, stop. If it's vocabulary that you would say out loud, if it's not a word you're really familiar with, you don't need to use it. Schools don't, are, aren't going to be particularly impressed by your vocabulary. They're, you want to draw them into the emotional content of the story and into the emotional content of who you are. So don't feel like you have to use flowery language or super complex um, um, phrasing or sentence structure, or that kind of stuff. Simple writing is great writing. Um, so just to give you a couple examples, avoid things like I was fortunate to have been awarded the position of, or things like, I had the honor of being chosen to volunteer at. Instead, just simplify, right? So I earned the position of blank, or I volunteered at blank. So use, right, active tense means subject, verb, object. So subject of the sentence, taking action on object of the sentence. So, so typically, you want to avoid that kind of convoluted phrasing um, and stick to simple stuff. Okay. So I am going to now ask you to participate with me a little bit. Um, and so I hope you're still awake. I know it's 426 on a Wednesday. Um, and I know you just heard me talk for 26 minutes. Um, and so I am gonna ask you basically, based on what we talked about so far, and based on the principles, I'm just gonna chat with you. I'm gonna put up an example of an introduction, like the very start of an introductory paragraph um, of a bunch of different personal statements. And I just want to hear what you think, whether you think they're good or not or why. Um, and so I'm going to ask you to um, unmute yourself um, and say words out loud. Um, you don't have to turn on your, your video if you don't want, but you totally can. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, all the things we talked about, plus, right, the goal of an introduction is to draw your reader into your essay with a hook, right? So uh, the most type of hook is a, a story in the moment. Um, usually you don't want to start with a quotation. Um, Bob Ross said, quote, so on and so forth, that that is not usually very successful. Um, and then all the other things we discussed. So sample introduction number one. Ever since I was a small child, I've wanted to become a podiatrist. What do you all think? Is that a good start or not? No. 
the Why not? Over, overly used common thing like you discussed in a previous slide. Yeah, so it feels, it feels really super familiar. Like it's that familiar theme of, you know, I've wanted to do this since I was a kid. And so immediately your reader kind of tunes out. I've heard this before. I can imagine what, what they're going to say, right? And we can imagine, right? Like when you were a kid, you played with toys that related to being a doctor and you, you know, so on and so forth, right? Okay. Cool. Number two. The sweat beaded on my forehead as if someone had turned the tap on all the way and forgotten about it. It felt like someone had poured an entire swimming pool on my head. The hallway was small and crowded, lined with tile that may once have been white, but was now closer to the color of old bone, Urkel George's teeth. My arms were, and, and going on from there. What, what do you think? Is that a good start to an introduction? I think it focuses too much on the setting and doesn't have enough detail about what the actual situation is. Okay. And so while it may be engaging, it may be a little bit too much, right? So like you can put too much flowery language in, right? And it's unnecessary. You only have 5,300 characters. Get to the point. How does this relate to why you want to be a doctor, right? So maybe we can cut out the swimming pool line, maybe we can cut out Uncle George's teeth, right? And we can pull the reader in and get them excited to, to read on and, and get to the point more quickly. Okay, I like that. Yeah, well, I, I'd say the first sentence is probably enough to draw your attention. I mean, you read that and I was sold, so I didn't need to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so there is this tendency, right? Like that people are like, oh, I got to draw my reader in. So I'm, you know, I, it's going to be like a short story. Like I'm going to get published in a short story journal. And it's not that. It's not an exercise in creative writing. And um, when, when you hear admissions professionals do um, personal statement workshops like this, this is the common kind of goal that they do where they're like, it's just too much. We don't need it all. It's great. Pulls us in. But we don't need all, all, all of this. We want you to get to the point eventually. Number three, everyone has fears. Mine was the hospital. I mean, I would say it's more on the bad side. <laughs> um, it's very short, it's not descriptive. It doesn't make me think any deeper and honestly makes me contemplate, you know, if they're still afraid of the hospital, why they're applying. <laughs> But aren't you kind of drawn in? Wait, this person wants to go to medical school? They're afraid of the hospital? What's going to happen next? I mean, you imagine this is probably the start to a longer paragraph. Are, are you curious to find out? I would say yes, because I think it all depends on what the next content is. So yeah, I would say, like, if I was on the admissions committee, I would say, okay, this one is maybe worth taking a couple more minutes to see what's written next. Yeah, like I, I can see it either way. I don't think there's one formula, right? Um, I, I think it all does depend on what happens next. Um, but also, I've had a few people say about this one, fear of the hospital is kind of a cliche, right? Fill in the dots, who wasn't afraid of the hospital at some point, so that's a story that seems like a cliche. I can see that, right? But I think you can make anything work um, to, to an extent. Um, and someone put, it, put in the chat, um, interesting and they want to know what they're afraid of and what drives them to be in that environment. So for some, for someone on the admissions committee, it may be super intriguing. Like what is this? What's what's going on? Um, and so um, it, it may be, it may depend on what's what comes next. But I, but I also think like it, it's 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 all selective. It kind of depends on the day and who's on the admissions committee. And so you're gonna write the best personal statement you can, but you're not gonna hit every single person. Um, uh, but you're going to try to, you know, kind of swim in, in the middle and try to get as many people as possible. And more, I closed my eyes for a second, resting my mind and mentally prepared myself for the flight back to Arizona. As dad pumped gas to get a support, I heard it. The sound of a truck backing up, the clank of a trailer, a half-muted scream, and then someone getting the wind completely knocked out of them. I like this one. Me what too. What do you like about it? I like it because um, it is an attention grabber. I mean, I was um, 
it's a story and I enjoyed following along. Um, but you also see that it does have like a medical, something's happening medically. And that obviously triggered them to write something like this or to apply. So I like this a lot. <laughs> so it gives you a hint of what something medical is gonna happen, even though you don't know, right? You're drawn in. I think there, there are quite a few sensory details here, right? Mostly sound related, but sensory details can really pull us in. Okay. Um, other thoughts? It's also obviously recent since they were flying, or probably recent since they're a student at the U of A. So they're probably flying back to college. So it's not a, a story from their childhood. So it doesn't fall into that, that trap of um, really, really, really long ago. Yeah. Other thoughts? And someone in the chat said they don't like this one um, as much. They think it's a bit much, right? And I can see that as well, right? So is there a way to get to the interest here with it just a little bit less verbiage so that you can spend more time the admissions committee in those 5,300 characters um, who are? I think, I think that's a pop, that's a pop suggestion. Um, and then someone else asks, does the personal statement have to be like creative nonfiction? I would say yes to an extent, um, but I don't think it has to be, right? Like be who you are, right? If you're not a creative writer, maybe you're not gonna use tons of free language and you can still write a great essay. I lots of great personal statements that are just pretty, pretty darn straightforward, right? Happened, here's what it meant to me. Here's how I reflected on it. Right? I think you do wanna be showing reflective thinking for sure. You definitely want it to be in your voice, um, but it doesn't have to be creative nonfiction. It doesn't, you don't want it to stretch your reader, right? So if I'm thinking of great creative nonfiction, I'm thinking of things that are pretty challenging. You don't want this to be challenging. You wanna connect all the dots for your reader. You want, you know, think about the admissions committee. They might be reading 500 of these in a couple of weeks or in a month, right? And so you wanna be kind to them. You wanna make it easy for them to follow Things too hard to get at the point, but they do want to get to you as a person. And this person says in the chat, I think the last portion of the scream and the wind being knocked out is enough to interest the reader, perhaps leading in with something shorter, right? So maybe we don't need as much context. We just get that moment of someone being hit and we want to find out more and we can kind of zoom in from there. Yeah, and, and so it would probably happen on depend on what happened next essay, which which approach was going to be appropriate. At some point, we need a little context, but maybe we don't need context at the very very beginning. Maybe the story starts that then we provide a little context, and then we you know show our reflective thinking and relate that back to why we want to go um, more uh, go into our health profession. Okay, number five, child. I tolerated Yuma, Arizona's brutal summers and ignored anxieties about lung cancer to sit outside and chat with dad while he smoked. It's quite negative. That's kind of my immediate takeaway. Okay. I don't I really see the kind of hint point. That is that thing. Go ahead, Tanya, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I said, I don't really see the point of, the point of it. Okay, so it's hard for you to connect that with with the health profession thing. Like for me, I'm like, oh, okay, it must be that their dad got lung cancer, and they I'm with them at the hospital. So there's a story about their childhood, and then it leads to health. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The language certainly doesn't really draw me in. Um, like my first assumption was, are they talking about secondhand smoke because they're sitting next to their dad who's smoking? Yeah, and that's what I imagine, right? But it does make your reader maybe think a little bit more than, than they should. Like, how does this connect? You don't want them to have to ponder, right? You want them to be able to read quickly. Um, certainly, certainly in, in that there was a comment, hopefully they're applying to, to Arab schools, <laughs> um, probably um, with, with that, with, with the, the brutality of the summers. Um, yeah. I think also that it could be considered like the last one um, in like a medical profession as a admission committee, like 
you would automatically kind of connect like, oh, they have, maybe they grew up with COPD and maybe they're dealing with certain things. And so depending on like, maybe the admissions reader is a smoker or used to be a smoker. So I think it could still, this one to me feels like it's a very fine line of like what actually comes next. So I don't know. I think, I think it would highly depend on the admissions committee person that's actually reading this. I think this is one of those swimming, like, uh, I'm not sure if it like falls into a specific yes or no type of situation. And, and I agree with that, right? It's hard to tell unless you read the whole essay. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of it's gonna depend. Um, okay, so we'll move through this one. Let me see, yeah. I think we've got time for one more. Um, so here, here's, here's number six. I am the sort of person who does not like to give up on something if I know I can achieve it. After finding a broken top in a bin, I decided to take it home and repair it. A computer expert told me that it, that it was a lost cause. The laptop was irreparable. I took great pleasure in restoring it to working order. I think this one kind of falls victim to the show not tell thing because a lot of these sentences seem like they're just telling something and then like a very brief part of it actually shows it. So I think this could be compacted a little bit if they show what they're doing instead of just saying all these statements. Right. This is the type of person that I am. This is the type of, this is the thing that I did. So there's a lot of telling and not a lot of story in here. Okay. I, I like that. Thanks. It feels like it should be a personal statement for engineering school or something in like a computer or technology type of admissions. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit off topic. Someone in the chat said it's off topic and confusing, right? I think there's right, there's this like stereotype technician notion, like I in this personal statement going into, and just like I like to fix laptops, I like to fix people, like big, um, which, you know, so probably that's where this person's going. Uh, maybe that's not a great metaphor. I mean, you'd have to see where it went from there, um, but maybe that's not, right? It, it's pretty, if we're thinking of human beings as machine, that's not a very caring, empathetic doctor. Um, and so maybe it's, it's, it's not a great example. Maybe in our uh, cyberpunk future where we all have like Android arms and legs and stuff, this would be awesome. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And in the chat, um, Crystal says it would help to allow the admissions committee to draw their own conclusions instead of telling them what to get from it and what they're trying to say, right? And so there's, you know, you, know, you say connect your dots for, for your committee, but, you know, sometimes like people, people um, find joy during things, especially if it's easy, right? And there's some satisfaction in that, right? I mean, that's, you know, um, yeah. A great technique. Um, cool. Okay. Either way, you can do this, right? You're already, you know, uh, taking a look, thinking through what's good and, um, and, and helping each other out. Um, in those handouts um, that I gave you that handout link at the beginning, bit.ly forward slash Ethan handout. Um, there is this rubric. So this is one way of thinking through, right? You can use this with other people's personal statements or with your own. Um, most uh, health profession schools rubric that they're using to evaluate your personal statement. They've got a bunch of different reviewers um, from all over the place, trying to be as objective as possible, using a rubric to rate it in different areas. So this is one example of a rubric um, that you could use um, to, to help you evaluate your own personal statement or if you found some friends to work with that you could you could trade statements and use this rubric to to, to help evaluate and improve other people um, how to get started so as I said at the beginning there's no one right way to do this um, writing is a very personal process um, and everyone's kind of got a different way of doing it so so honor the process that works for you um, but here are some ideas to get started um, so even before you sit down to write your statement, so you're not thinking I'm writing a 5,300 character statement, even before you do all this, do some pre-work. Um, and um, the first thing you might do is you might just make a list of 10 to 15 experience or moments that have been important to you in relation to wanting to become a doctor. 
create. Um, this might include a moment when you actually got the spark to become a doctor, right? Whatever that thing was, and there might be multiple, right? Um, or it could be subsequent moments that cemented that or showed you that you'd be good at it or, you know, got at some particular. So just making a list of those, of those comments. Uh, or of those of those moments, um, you know, just to start. And then um, number two, um, I, I think this one's really important. So you're not even thinking, I'm not writing a personal statement, I'm just doing pre-work. This is pre-writing, I can throw this away. Um, spend some time pre-writing on the question of why do you wanna become a doctor? Why do you wanna become a dentist? Or why do you wanna become a PA? Um, it's really hard if you to write a personal statement that's about why you wanna do it if you don't exactly know yourself. And you shouldn't be figuring it out while you're trying to create a polished, concise piece of writing. So you really want to know for yourself, why do you want to be a doctor? So just do some free writing, right? Flesh out your reasons. Like what is at the core of why you want to do this? Um, that might involve conversations. It might involve free writing. It may you know, involve, involve a variety of things. But anything you can do to try to get at that before you try to sit down and really create and craft this, this uh, very statement is going to do well. Um, so a few questions in the decisions available to have read over and give feedback on statements. Yes, we'll go over that at the end. Um, is it possible to get a power copy of the PowerPoints? And yes, they are in that link. Um, in the Ethan handouts link is this PowerPoint as well. Cool. So a couple approaches. So I'm just, these are two, as a former writing instructor um, and former writing tutor, these are just two approaches. Um, this is, doesn't mean these are the right way to start it for you, um, but um, these are two approaches that you could take to, to getting started on your personal statement or starting to write your personal statement. So, um, and there are handouts in the handout link, um, basically worksheets that you can kind of work through, like start here, do this, think about this, think about this, and here's an outline, get started writing, right? So if, if you like that kind of concrete step-by-step -step thing, here are two approaches that may work for you. Approach number one is start with the core competencies. So start with those competencies, look at those pre-professional competencies um, and think, what are the three or four that are most, that are the strongest for you, that are the most important for you that you would want to highlight to the admissions committee, right? Grab those three or four and then um, for each of those, list two or three experiences that you've had that relate to that, that demonstrate each of those competencies. Um, and then after you've done free work, pick the single best experience for each, and then you know get started writing. Um, approach number two, start with a list of experiences. So maybe you're looking at that list of 10 to 15 that we already chatted about, um, or maybe you know it's a, a, a list that you've, you've uh, culled down a little bit. Pick, start, so starting with the experiences as a pick the three you think are most important to your decision to pursue medicine or that best demonstrate uh, aptitude for medicine or that you would be a great doctor. And then, so take those experiences and match those up with some of those AM, a, AAMC core competencies um, and see which, uh, which experiences exemplify each, right? So kind of going through and seeing ways that you could get at quite a few of those competencies with those experiences. Um, and then start writing that way, perhaps using um, an experience in each body paragraph and making sure that you're highlighting elements of those competencies that in, in the way that you reflect on the experiences that you're, that you're sharing. So those are two possible approaches. There's a million different ways of doing it, um, but if something concrete is useful for you. Um, what's next? So, um, Get started as soon as you can. Don't wait. If you're a sophomore, write a personal statement anyway. Um, even if you're not applying anytime soon, the sooner you get started, the better. You know, if you think about it, you know, by the time you apply, you're going to have three or four years of practice doing science, right? Working on those those pre-med um, prerequisites. But maybe if you waited till a month before you applied to write your personal statement, right? You're not getting much practice with that. And so the earlier you can start on the personal statement, the better. If you're applying this year in May and you haven't started yet, you're fine. You're totally gonna get there. Um, you, you, you can totally do it, but get started as soon as you can. Don't wait, don't try to do this at the last minute. Don't feel like you're, you're rushing this or you've gotta get it done. 
um, that does not that's not a great um, position to be in for for a statement like this. Um, even if you're a I thrive under pressure kind of person, I still don't think great writing comes out of that kind of situation. Um, if you are feeling lost, um, things that you can do, right? So like, I don't even know where to get started. I don't know what to do. You gave me these concrete things, but I'm a person that needs to talk it out. And that's how I get there. I can't tell you how many times my favorite um, tutoring appointments as a writing tutor were when a student came in and said exactly that. Here's the thing I have to do. Where do I get started? It's really fun to brainstorm with people. And so pre health advisors are happy to do that. But the professional writing tutors at the Writing Skills Improvement Program and the professional and peer tutors at Think Tank are also great at that. So, you know, if that's the way you process, use that resource. Um, you know, people are good at that. People love doing that. And sometimes that's a great way to process. Um, you definitely want to get support in revising and refining your statement. Um, writing is an iterative process. Professional writers go through 7, 12, 15, 20 drafts to get to a great polished piece of writing. Um, don't, don't expect that, that you would need less. You might need less. You might get there on the third draft and that happens, right? It happens to professional writers, but, but don't, you know, just know that it's really, really normal to have to go through a bunch, a bunch of different drafts. You know, people will throw away three drafts before they land on one that they even want to refine. So don't don't feel like um, don't feel like you have to get there really quickly. It takes time. Um, don't fall in love with your first draft. Full rewrites are really common. So if you write a first draft, don't feel like you need to polish it. Sometimes you just got to throw it away and start again. And that's how you get to the, the piece that's going to show who you are the best. Um, also, you should you should help each other. Um, I'm gonna. Um, this is a suggestion, um, and don't don't feel any pressure from me. But um, if we can, Lauren put the the Bitly link in the in the chat. Basically, I've created a Google Doc. Um, it's or a Google spreadsheet. If you want other people, like people that are in this session today, if you want, if you're willing to read someone else's draft and give them feedback, and you want them to read your draft and give you feedback, you can put your name in this. Um, in this Google um, document, uh, this Google sheet, it's, it's public, right? So you're all gonna see each other's information. If you put your name and your email in there and your profession, you're gonna see each other's information, but it's a good way of maybe seeing some other folks that might be applying soon um, and finding some other folks to, um, to, to share drafts with. So if you're comfortable putting your name in there um, and you're willing to read someone else's draft, maybe using that rubric tool that, that's in the handout, um, if you're willing to do that, um, this is an opportunity to find a network of people um, to help. Um, other resources. Um, starting with Writing Skills Improvement Program, I think they're amazing. Um, you get a free 50 minute appointment once every two weeks. They're all professional tutors. They're all great at what they do. Any place in the process, they're gonna be amazing at helping you. Um, and, and be professional at it. So take advantage. Um, Think Tank has lots of great resources for you as well. So you can get 30 to 45 minute appointments um, in the past in person, now online, um, free appointments for trained peer and graduate student tutors. And then you can also pay for 50 minute um, sessions with professional tutors. So those are great resources. And then um, we're certainly here for you. So pre-health advisors like me and my colleagues um, would love to work with you. Um, if you do decide to work with, with our team, this is how we work. Um, you want to uh, set up an appointment for 24, 48, 72 hours in advance, um, and then you want to email us your draft. So we, want, we need to have your draft 24, 48, 72 hours in advance so that we have time to read it before we meet with you during your appointment so we can give you the best possible feedback. Um, and remember that weekends exist. So if you send it to me on Friday night and then our appointments on Monday morning, I'm not going to have read your statement because I do not work on the weekends. So, um, you know, be sensitive to that. But, you know, the more, the more lead time you can give us, the better. Um, but we're very happy to work with you um, because there are about 12,000 pre-health students at the University of Arizona. We usually only have time to read your draft about once. Um, but there are tons of resources available and we definitely would love to help you. Um, 
And definitely make appointments about all sorts of things, including your personal statement. We can help you with all sorts of other application processes as well. Um, there is a question in the chat. And so, so we are at the question portion. So I'm gonna answer that one. Um, someone in the chat said, I have clinical experience from almost, almost 10 years ago. Is it okay to draw from, those exper from these experiences or wait until I have more recent ones? Um, you know, all of these things are judgment calls. I would probably do something more recent if possible, um, but I think it would depend on like, what is the experience? What are you trying to get at? Um, when are you applying? You know, will you have time to have another experience? Um, you don't feel like you have to, there's no, there's no hard and fast rules. So even though I said like, don't, don't rely on something, you know, from 10 years ago, I think it depends on the experience, depends on who you are and the, and the situation. It may be that that's the, the perfect moment for your personal statement to tell your story. Um, but, you know, in general, I would lean toward things that are a little bit more recent. Um, other questions? I, I went to teacher's college, and so they teach you that wait time is a thing, and that students often take 15, 20, 30 seconds to process before answering a question. And the biggest mistake that teachers make is they think they've been waiting for 15 minutes after they said, do you have any questions? And they've waited for four seconds. So if I'm staring at you after asking you um, if you have any questions, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you a chance to think and ask. So any questions? Victory is yours, um, success. So yeah, my email address is up here. The handout link is on here again. Um, Lauren has wonderfully been um, putting all sorts of great links in the chat. Um, and so I do and want to- Ethan, we have, mm -hmm. Crystal is asking in the chat, any other resources? Oh. And I think that would tie into just what, what Ethan was talking about, writing skills, um, think tank, meeting with us. Um, oh, okay. Other additional recommended resources. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. There is this book. I can't remember where it is. It's pretty good. Um, sorry, it was sitting somewhere around my, my current desk situation, but I don't know where it is now. Um, but there, there's, a, there, there's several pretty good books. If you email me, I'll, 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 I'll send you a link. Did someone just pick up a great book that they want to share? Can you share it? Yeah, well, okay, I haven't even read it yet. I haven't picked it up, but I got this. Um, I'm going to, or I'm trying to go to PA school. Um, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Have you seen it? I haven't seen that particular one, but I've, I've read a couple books like them and I think they're all really good, right? I think it's, right? yeah, I mean, I think if it's telling you there's one right way to do it, then that's probably not right. But, um, you know, you can read between the lines, right, and know that, um, that, right, that there's not going to be one perfect way, but it can give you just some great ideas. Yeah. Um, and someone Is put a recommend, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Is it also a good idea to look at examples of personal statements? Would that be good, too? I think that's great, yeah. Um, you want to make sure that you're not, like, following a formula from someone else, but I think it can give you some ideas. Um, of, of you know how to write a statement, but don't get caught up like that's the one way to write it. I have to do this thing first, this thing second, this thing third. I don't think there's a formula. And sometimes the best personal statements I've read um, have been statements that I'm like, wow, I didn't think of doing it that way. And that is amazing. I am sold, right? So, so I mean, that's the danger, the danger of reading too many personal statements and um, is, is getting stuck in that, in that mold and that formula and then not being able to have it be in your voice. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, and there are, there's lots of great podcasts. If you're not listening to pre-health podcasts, I would recommend it if you've got time. It's a really, especially if you're doing something like working out or driving, um, it's a really great way. There's lots of amazing ones out there um, and, and that, that may touch on subjects like this. Um, I'm going to promote a couple events coming up, and then I'm going to stick around. So if people have more questions, I'm going to keep going past five. And then if you um, if you got to go, you got to go. Um, so 
uh, one week from today, on March 31st, I'm going to do a peer review session. So basically, I'm going to structure an experience where I'm going to have you break out into breakout rooms, um, paired up with someone else who's got bringing a personal statement with them. So in order to come to this, you got to bring a personal statement draft. You have to be prepared with it. Um, and so um, the idea is I'm going to structure the experience of giving people feedback. On a, on a personal statement, um, pair you up in a breakout room. Hopefully you'll get at least one other reader. And then similarly, try to create a community of folks that are willing to work with each other um, using the tools that, that we provide in the workshop to, 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 to support each other in the process. The, the more folks doing it that, that you can work with, the better, the, the, the bigger your network. I mean, obviously there is a danger of too many cooks in the kitchen. So don't, right, you might have 42 readers for your personal statement, all of which are giving you different advice, and then you're confused. Um, so that's a danger, but it can't help to have a community of folks. Um, and so that's kind of the idea. The, the idea is to get yourself a, a peer review, um, and then also maybe um, help you create a little bit of a community of folks to help around the personal statement. Um, and then if you are applying to medical school this year, um, April 14th, I'm putting on an AMCAS application walkthrough um, workshop. Um, so as you know, the AMCAS application opens on May 3rd. Um, and so I'll basically be you know, giving you screenshots and tips, right? Here's how the AMCAS application works. Be careful of this part, be careful of that part. Do this with your transcripts when you generate the letter for your recommenders. Here's where it is and what you need to do with it. And so just kind of walking through what the process looks like. So I definitely agree with uh, uh, I definitely recommend you attend that if you're applying this year. We do not do a CASPA one. Um, I'm sorry, um, but we can definitely support you um, um, if you're doing your CASPA. So like set up an appointment. And you know, I do this all the time with students um, is, you know, we walk through different elements of the application and just kind of talk it through and, and figure it out together. 